As I have said many times this semester, this class teaches non-fiction cinema, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to make a film about the latest celebrity, broadcast journalism is down the hall. TV journalism is fluff, mind meatloaf for fat women. Non-fiction cinema should make the viewer a participant, an accomplice, a voyeur. Keep in mind while you're out there, cinematic form and ethics always come first. And be aware that you are documenting reality with your camera, but that camera does not create some magical protective bubble around you. Life can always reach out and touch you. Which brings me to my last point of the day, your final project of the semester, a 30-minute non-fiction film. A statement of intent citing at least three real references, not from the web, but from the library, will be due in my office by the close of business tonight. For those of you not familiar with the library, it's the big white building in the middle of campus. You can't miss it. If you have any problems, you can always refer back to your course notes or your shooting guide. Choose wisely, shoot safely, and bring back some good stuff. Um, what was the... What? <laughs> Where are you? On my way to the damn train. <laughs> no, the party got busted. Just cops and drunk freshmen running around everywhere. Hey, no, what was the name of that, um, the hospital, the one you're always talking about? The Copper Queen community? Copper, one. Copper Queen. Tell me you didn't call me on a Friday night just for that. <laughs> are you gonna hit 4th Avenue tonight? No, I've had enough excitement for one night. So is this for Mr. McNutbuster's class? Uh, yeah, final project. You live with me for two years and you finally take my advice. I'm thinking about it. Eat me. You know what? Let me get out of here so I don't become a statistic. See you at home. All right, bye. A ghost is defined as a disembodied soul, especially the soul of a deceased person believed to be an inhabitant of the unseen world, or to appear to the living in bodily likeness, often as a result of some tragedy or trauma. Do they exist? Ultimately, as a documentarian, my goal is to present the information. Because I'm done, Brad. Nah, nah. You're just saying that. What am I supposed to do? No, you can do whatever the hell you want. Oh, come on, baby. I'm hurting over here. Well, you can go cry on that horse shoulder for all I... I told you already. She meant nothing. I was wasted. Oh, you were drunk? Oh, so I'm in the wrong for being mad? Oh, well, yeah. You know what? Fuck you. Stop calling me. Hey! You fucking hang up on me. Son of a... Angel! I'm in here! 
<laughs> Captain Jackass is being a little possessive, don't you think? Fucking nightmare. Not that you're currently playing with one of your privates. <laughs> Daniel is harmless. But I'm serious, Maya. If he puts one more bruise on you, I'll clip his fucking sack. <laughs> bruise wasn't even the half of it. It's just... Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. I told him off earlier. It's over. <laughs> Looks like he got the message. Hold on. A government bill to crack down on laboratories. We should probably get a restraining order on his ass. <laughs> Original cocksuckers like that usually have trouble with the word no. <laughs> I always end up with these guys. It's like a fucking parade, one psychotic tool after another. Is it just me? No. You just have shit luck, that's all. God! So, you're right, this place has a lot of history. I'm surprised no one's used it before. <laughs> I told you, it's an undiscovered gem. You can be the first. You know, they say, the walls sweat blood. They say the ghostly apparitions pace the narrow hallways and you can hear the sounds of tortured souls echoing through the trees at night. <laughs> Freak. <laughs> Have you been there before? <sighs> you know I haven't. You and Daniel keep flaking out on me. Well, you can quit bitching because we're going this weekend. Finally, you come to your senses and do something cool. Not that I don't like your normal stuff, but you know, finally something interesting, fun. Yeah, thanks. You know, that's what I like about you. You're so supportive. I'm here for you. Oh, Ghost Chaser's on. I was a plumber. Then one day, I was sneaking a toilet and saw something that changed my life. Now I go around the country looking for ghosts. My name is Wes Carpenter, and I am the Ghost oh, Chaser. Jesus.
imports the Blue Jays and the Yankees. Um, could... Excuse me, sir? Hey, Poindexter! Her tits aren't going to wrap this up any faster. I'm kind of in a hurry, okay? Thank you. Sign there. It was very necessary. He's coming back. Oh, joy. Okay, great. You ladies need any help carrying that out. <laughs> we'll take it from here, sport. Okay. Are we good? Oh, yeah. Okay. Real good. Great, thanks. Peanut lighter. Let's get out of here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Better be. Get a movie? Not exactly. 
more like hardcore porn. <laughs> That's hot. <laughs> you know you'd fit right in there. Don't give me that. It's everything you're thinking. Just gross. By the end of the day, I felt like I had such a cup trying to buy my shoes. I kept sticking to the floor and shit. We had a quick break, but they were late the next set. So I'd go over to craft service, which consists of a couple cereal bars and a big punch bowl full of M&Ms. As I go to grab something, one of the actors walks up and without any regard starts to fluff himself right in front of me. And then the fucker has the nerve to ask me about the weather like I'm George Michael and we're in a public restroom. So he's trying to hold a, and without missing a beat, he takes his dick hand and sticks it right in the bowl, taking a big handful of M&Ms. <laughs> and then Nacho Ali goes about his business like he does it all the time. The fucker had a free hand Fuck and still dick. chose to dig in there with his gooey head palm. Fucking dick. It was just sick. I felt like I needed a shower after that. <laughs> Not much going on here, is there? Well, after the taco ran out, the town population went from like 7,000 to 50 practically overnight. It says in the early 1890s, a couple conceived their first child in the bottom of, of the pit. That's exactly what it says. And they still live down there today. In a mass orgy, right where you see that big spot. Dude, look at that shit. Serious. I mean, it's a perfect place for a great orgy. Both of the pictures. Here we go. All right. Hi, sir. Um, I'm Maya, and we're from the university uh, up here doing a documentary for class on the old hospital. Oh, ain't nothing worth documenting up there, girl. Even with all of the ghosts? Ghosts? Is that right? Uh, uh, yeah. Are you familiar with the Cobra Queen? Yeah. It's been up there my whole life. One of the unfortunate 50, I guess. Something funny? Oh, no, sorry. Do you know how to get there? You'd have to be blind to miss it. Sometime around 1910, I think during the Taft presidency, the hospital was open to accommodate the influx of miners and their families going to work in the mule. I'm sorry, uh, the mule? The mule Mountains. At its peak, our population rose to, oh, about 9,000. But by the 1950s, boom times were over. People began to leave town. After time, the hospital became a, uh, a special care facility in children's hospital. At least, that's what they told us. It wasn't until the 70s, after the place was shut down, that we started to hear about the things they actually did there. Miss, do you believe that the hospital is haunted? Um, well, I don't know for certain. I've heard lots of stories, but I personally haven't seen anything. Do you believe in ghosts? Well, like I said, I haven't seen anything myself. But my best friend at the time, Sonny, she came over to my house terrified one night by what she had seen. It was like she was hopped up on something, you know, all manic. As long as I've known her, I've never seen her like that, so... There's got to be something to it, and Sonny wouldn't lie to me. What did they do then? They were torturing those poor kids with that electric shock therapy, and they've been doing it for years. Most of the patients were wards of the state, labeled with some social behavioral disorder, or diagnosed with some mental illness, so they were easy prey. All this came out after that fucking doctor was found. The scandal, mixed with the closure of the mine, almost shut this town down. Now we're just a burnt out wasteland. She said she saw a shadowy man who seemed to float through the woods. Now she was petrified telling me this, dragging a dead body behind him. No, it's all bullshit, lady. Even with all the stories? Especially with all the stories. Are you kidding me? My aunt, I mean, back in 93, 
Man, she said she saw uh, uh, Elvis at the Piggly Wiggly. Man, it, you know, I was at the stop and go one time, and I saw uh, somebody. It wasn't who I thought it was, but I saw him. You know, but it turned out to be a marmot. You know, but uh, people see what they want to see, lady. You know, it's just, it just, you know, don't listen to nobody. It's, it's all bullshit, really. Excuse me, sir. Um, could you tell us about the old hospital? What business is of yours? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm making a documentary. Leave it alone. That place caused this town more trouble. You city brats, you don't know a damn thing about it. Thank you. All right. On to the next crotchety old bastard. Have you been out there since she took you? We've come close a couple of times, but only in broad daylight and with a shitload of people. Nowadays, I don't have much reason to go out that far outside of town. Not anymore. I tell you what, I sure as hell won't let my kids go out there. Every now and then, when some city kid comes up missing, I hear a news story that says they must have been swallowed up by some ghosts. <laughs> I've heard a million stories. Uh, that somebody heard something, somebody saw something, things like that. But only stories. You gotta stop wasting your time with me. You should be talking to Mrs. Campbell. She knows it all, hell, she's seen it all. Used to be a nurse up there. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, you have anything to ask about that, you kids? You ask Mrs. Campbell. She knows the truth. Well, I guess this is it. Dude, I get a bad vibration from this place. Well, it's a little fucked up, but it's not exactly Texas Chainsaw Massacre either. Yeah, but I mean, ever since we've come to this goddamn desert, I just feel like we're gonna get shot or we're gonna get rabies or some ridiculous bullshit like that. I mean, coming to a place like that, it's like we're just asking for it. Well, then stay in the car. We don't need you anyway. Thanks. Actually, I'm just gonna go in and ask her if we can come in. I'll be right back. Documentary on the old hospital? Oh, yes. Harlan Scruggs. Yeah. Please, come inside. Okay. Um, do you want to just tell us everything you remember from that time? Was the hospital really haunted or...? I had just turned 15 when my father moved the family here to work on the mine in December of 1940. After the the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor in 41. I stayed on at the hospital, eventually becoming a nurse. For those first few years, we were simply a hospital concerned with patient care. By 1950, boom times were definitely over. That's when this unknown doctor took over at the hospital. Under him, I watched the focus of the hospital change. He had an un bearable bitch of a wife. Excuse my language, but she was just as responsible for what happened here as he was, maybe more. They weren't interested in curing anyone. In order for the hospital to continue getting government funding, they had to maintain a certain number of patients on the books. That's when the first disappearances were reported. Oh, um, I didn't get a lot of information. I found a few newspaper clippings. I know what the newspapers said. I also know what I saw. Patients would come in and out of the tunnels. No paperwork, no history. It went on like that for years. That's when he showed up. Who, Mrs. Campbell? His name was Isaac. He was a typical little boy. 
but there was just something about him that didn't fit. He wasn't supposed to be there, I mean, honestly, none of those poor children should have been there. Acute schizophrenia and depression, the doctor said, but none of the symptoms on his chart matched up. It just seemed like he was abandoned there. So I took it upon myself to look after him. He was beginning to make progress until Dr. Hastetler had him sent downstairs to therapy. That's what they called it, therapy. When I asked where he was taken, they simply said that he was transferred downstairs and that Isaac was no longer my concern. After that, I never saw the boy again. Later that fall, rumors began to circulate around the nursing staff about the boy's true identity. Rosie Shaw, a close friend of mine at the time, heard the doctor and his wife arguing in his office. That illegitimate bastard needs to disappear. Do you hear me? He could jeopardize everything we've worked for. I took care of the mother when she showed up at our fucking doorstep. You need to handle this situation one way or the other. Just handle it. Now! It's my son. That week I couldn't get it out of my head, so I snuck into the restricted lower level to check up on him. What I saw there made me sick to my stomach. Before I could go any further, I was caught and promptly asked to leave. Later, I heard from Rosie that Isaac had died. Did the doctor ever admit that Isaac was his son? No, he never did. The doctor was found dead. There was no question who had done it, not in my mind at least. I'm sorry, Mrs. Kimball, but, um, everything I had read said it was a murder-suicide. Forgive me, but I was there. I know the truth. Um, what is the truth, Mrs. Kimball? That the boy killed them all. And I can't say they didn't deserve it. That night, I saw the boy as a man. I hate to think of it. But he must have gotten out and been living in that hospital the whole time. The sheriff knew my history with Isaac. We tracked him from the hospital's house all the way to the hospital grounds. When we caught up to him, he was dragging the body of that damn nurse. They dumped his body in a shallow grave. You asked about the ghosts up there. I saw him die. I saw the anguish in his eyes. I believe that tormented boy is the ghost you're after. Isaac didn't deserve what happened to him. That boy wasn't born evil. He was made that way. I think I'm done now, dear. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Oh my god, holy shit. I can't believe you just got that. Yeah, pretty fucking creepy. She was amazing. Now we just have to cover the hospital. Dude, I'm not even sure I want to go anymore. Oh, come on. We're so close, and all we need is some B-roll footage and a little audio, some ghost chasers type stuff, and I'll have you home in time for South Park. All right, if you say so. like on Animal Planet, you know, and like the, the awkward water buffalo like mounts the graceful gazelle. <laughs> it's just because it's your first time seeing it. I mean, you get used to it really. All you need is a blindfold, earplugs, Lysol, and a bucket of Purell. You cool it. You have to get on the road. Yeah, dude. Can you guys hold off for like 20 minutes? And I would really prefer it if you would pay to get the car washed. Least y'all dirty motherfuckers could do. Ugh. Dude, you guys, move over. Oh, this is disgusting. Dude, it's reeks in here.
you guys to only bring what you need. Come on, we have to get up this hill. Hey! You ain't supposed to be fooling around out here. What's the problem? You're up here. Come on, sport. These young girls, they don't want to be messing around up here. It ain't safe. It's not the old west, cowboy. These are big girls. They can take care of themselves. This is a dangerous area. You just can't go wandering around here like you know what you're doing. This whole area is peppered with abandoned mine shafts, not to mention the wild animals. If you ain't from here, you might not make it out of here. Now I'd go back where you came from now, I'm serious. Thank you for your concern, sir, but we'll be all right. Thanks, coach. It's a great talk. Mm-hmm. You're pretty fucking smart, ain't you? You think you know everything. You've got all the answers, right? Well, you're gonna be damn sorry you didn't listen to me because that fucking ego of yours is gonna get your candy ass in trouble. You're fucking serious, really? Stop, dude. You'll all be dead by morning. Oh, yeah? Well, fuck you too, old Stop! Man. How's that guy's problem anyway? The fucker's probably pretty good. Right? Well, that means... They cut the power down at the street level. It'll work. My friends and I snuck into the mine last summer. The lights in there were on and it was all tied together. Damn, girl. It was last summer. When the hell did you guys get engineering degrees? Yeah, you got it. And then uh, when Lucas gets here, 
You can do the infrared and you... I mean, just do whatever you want to do. <laughs> you should never say that to me. Tucson figuring shit out. They diagnosed me with 
acute exhaustion and depression. I tried to transfer back, but it was too late. I had already lost my scholarship, and I would have had to register as having a mental disorder so that they could keep tabs on me for my protection, of course. Um, so here I am. Shit. I'm sorry. No wonder this hits you so hard. 60 years ago, you could have been here. Why didn't you mention anything before? <laughs> yeah. yeah, hi, my name's Maya, and I just spent time in the psych ward, but I really need a roommate. <laughs> no, I trust you, I just... I guess I was hoping it would never come up. <laughs> Well, hey, I'm not gonna judge you. <laughs> now come on, let's go check the rest of this place out. <laughs> yeah? That crap over there. <laughs> oh, God. No, we actually traipsed through that. We did that for this film. Are you getting any of this or are you just playing around back there? Does any of this stuff look like a set from your last internship? No, this is clean. Yeah. This will be really good for pictures. You know the most dangerous thing in this place is your sense of curiosity. Um, you know, curiosity is what creates films. Uh-huh. Also, what kills filmmakers. Are there any more shit-infested holes you'd like to practice in here? Come on. Batteries. Oh, it's weird. Why would someone need to cut a hole in the middle of that? There we go. Huh. Can you get close on that? Yeah. This is nice. We journey together through the, the basement. Shut up. Pennington. All right, it is kind of nice, actually. I like the fact that there are nails sticking out of the ceiling everywhere. Mm. It's kind of like a Hellraiser. Check it. 
Snap up and keep your voice down, because if you don't, I'll start fucking myself. Now snap out of it. I'm gonna try it on my own. What are you saying? You don't give a fuck about us? Me? I'm just trying to maximize my potential of survival. And if I just stick down here and sniff your panties, it's just not worth it. I see how it is. Piece of shit. If that's what I have to be to survive, then fine. Fucking posing. Well, fuck you, you cunt. And you, your crazy ass friend. Staying down here is just not worth it. It's a great idea, Maya. Fuck you. This isn't. One in 50 doors are unlocked in this place. I wouldn't trust it. This place was built to trap people. I think that son of a bitch has been down here for a long time. He knows exactly where we are. He knows we only've got one way to go. I wonder what's through there. There's nothing you want to find out about. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, I can have this one.
Hey, what are you doing here? Are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. Is anyone with you or is it just anything else dead? Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. We'll, we'll be okay. Yeah. Um, All right. I came from that way in and I don't know where. But, um, do you want to try this way? Yeah, let's try it. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Okay. It's a map. I um, I read about this. They they in the when they built the mine. It's the miners got kicked in. It's got emergency exits, but I, I don't okay, know. Okay, 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 okay. Well, there's the surface, right? So if we keep going that way, then we can hit it. Yeah, or hit him. Well, we sure as hell can't go back, can we? Why? What are you looking for? I don't know. Something. And we have to have something to defend ourselves. We can't just sit here. We're wasting time. We need to keep moving. Let's go. He said we don't have a choice. What do you want to do? Trap him. We have to kill him. According to Webster's, a ghost is defined as a disembodied soul. 
especially the soul of a deceased person believed to be an inhabitant of the unseen world, or to appear to the living in bodily likeness, often as a result of some tragedy or trauma. Do they exist? Ultimately, as a documentarian, my goal is to present the information and possibly shed light on the truth. Zoe, 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 Zoe,